Hi there, this is Steve Kaufman here again. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, positive response to the series of videos that I did on uh, on the seven secrets of language learning and uh, it's kind of got me fired up plus uh, iMovies is working for me now so uh, I want to do another video. First of all, I am going to do this series of uh, seven secrets in different languages. Uh, at least I'm going to try. Uh, but before I get into that, I just wanted to have um, a little discussion here and I'm looking for feedback um, on this whole issue of, of how languages are taught and what seem to be the goals of teachers and learners in a traditional language learning setting. And I must admit that I haven't really thought this all through, but I just like to ramble and discuss and I just wish we were all able to sit down over a table and uh, face to face and exchange views and so forth, but we can't. So. I'll present my views and I look forward to hearing your views. Um, I had a, a, a online sort of discussion uh, which became a podcast where I spoke to a, a teacher uh, who, whose name is Sean and I put it up on my blog and he's a teacher of Spanish and I think English and of course he uh, explained to me how he uses different reading strategies, asking students to identify cognates uh, asking students to uh, explain their strategies in working their way through difficult texts in Spanish. Uh, he does let them uh, tackle, uh, you know, a sports page or whatever. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. I'm not a big fan of reading strategies. I'm never interested in cognates. I, I don't like the word. People don't even know what it means. Uh, most people are going to identify that there are words in, say, Spanish, which are similar to words in English, uh, that's part of the discovery that, in a way, we should leave to the student that really needn't be pointed out. But that was not the main issue. The main thing that I felt in listening to Sean, my impressions were, first of all, that he's obviously a very conscientious teacher and wants the best for his students. Uh, he told me how he has them write or develop a story with the words that they have learned and that after um, however many months with him, they are comfortable doing that and they really know the, uh, the words that they have learned. And how many words is that, I said, and he said, a hundred words. And so I then I started thinking, like, why would anyone want to speak when they only have a hundred words? What is the practical application of that? Uh, I've been learning Korean now for a while and I have some 4,000 words and uh, I went into a Korean restaurant here in Vancouver and I was surrounded by Korean people uh, speaking Korean a mile a minute and I could not, I mean, I caught the odd word here and there, but I had no idea what they were talking about. Uh, it, I can engage someone in a very simple Korean conversation and as long as they stay at my level, uh, like the weather is nice, uh, I'm learning Korean, things of that nature, then I'm okay. So from my point of view, I'm nowhere in Korean. Uh, I consider my, my uh, I am not in a position to engage anyone in Korean. Uh, I am interested in, in acquiring more, more words and phrases so that I can first of all understand Korean, that I can understand better uh, the content that we have at link. And so I thought more about this and I, and I think that in school, uh, given that most students are not that interested in learning languages and as Sean explained they need some specific uh, achievements tasks because they're not intrinsically motivated so he gives them a task uh, find the cognates or identify the infinitives in this text text so they've got a specific task and they do the task and maybe they get marked on it or they think they've done something in terms of learning the language um, identifying the infinitives, I, I don't think it does much. And the net result is at the end of a lot of this uh, school learning of languages, uh, first of all, as Sean pointed out, uh, three quarters of them drop out. So in the end, they don't end up being able to do anything in Spanish. But even those that stay in it, based on what I've heard, they don't end up being able to do much with their language. So what are we really achieving? And certainly we have numbers in Canada where English-speaking kids in the French school system uh, don't end up speaking French. I think, you know, where I'm coming on all of this is that um, the, the main task is to acquire words, as I've said many times. 
uh, and to familiarize yourself with the language by listening to a lot of the language and reading the language. So, I mean, here's here's an idea. If I were teaching, and I and I accept that I'm not a classroom teacher, and everyone's going to say that what you're saying is totally unrealistic, and blah blah blah. Uh, but maybe it's good to look at some of these activities, like classroom activities, from my perspective, which is not that of a classroom teacher, because the classroom teachers all get together and talk about what they should do and, and the net result is not very effective. So maybe we need somebody from the outside to look in and make some suggestions. And uh, one of the regular criticisms that I hear is that the kids won't read if they're just told to read, that they find this boring and so forth. But I also put on my blog, The Linguist on Language, I put a report in uh, the Globe and Mail paper here in Canada about how uh, in the United States there was this person who came up with a revolutionary idea that kids should be allowed to choose what they want to read. And the net result was an overwhelming response from the kids who really started reading. And they began by reading perhaps less uh, you know, exalted works of literature, but they eventually ended up reading quite a lot of different kinds of books. And so that there's a number, and I mentioned the previous example in New Brunswick, there are a number of examples from, uh, you know, uh, different situations in classrooms where kids, if allowed to read, in fact, do read. So I don't know. Some people do, some people don't, I guess. But what I would propose is that, that in a language classroom, and we should start them as early as possible, there should be only two goals for these kids. One is to... Again, I'm using Link as an example, so that if they had access to a Link type of system through their little portable whatever or on their computer or in some way, or maybe even going it through it in the classroom, uh, that they have to save as many words as possible. Like every week they have to save. If it were Link, they'd have to create 100 links. So they can only do that if they're going through some text. So they have to read. So it becomes a measurement of their activity. And the second goal is to arrive at as large a possible uh, number, as large as possible uh, number of known words. Again, passive knowledge, understanding, first and foremost. This pressure for active vocabulary is, is to my mind, is misplaced. Uh, so that we would measure their activity and we would measure the known words the way we do at link. And at the end of the year, they would get a closed test, which is this text with some words left blank and a drop-down list of five words, and they have to choose the right word. And so that on, and this is going to easily be done electronically, so that on all the words that they claim to have learned, that they claim to know, uh, they would be tested, and they would have to have a very high pass-fail on this closed test in order to say, yes, you have completed the work. You have maintained your level, your activity level, by saving so many words. And through all of your reading now, we identify that at least passively you know these words and you proved it in your closed test. And that's all. That's all there are tasks. Now, in addition to that, in the classroom, uh, kids should be allowed to watch movies, read books, listen to stories, talk if they want to, but not talk if they don't want. My whole point is that the speaking or talking is overdone. It's not so important because for most people who study the language, uh, their opportunity to speak it is very limited. Uh, therefore, if the focus is on understanding and, and, and uh, uh, increasing the vocabulary, these are meaningful goals within the context of how they're going to use the language. If they build up this vocabulary, and if they build up their ability to understand, when they are put in a situation where they need to speak, the speaking will come along very, very quickly. Because ultimately, in order to speak well, ultimately you have to speak a lot. And if you are not in a position where you have to speak a lot, then it becomes quite unrealistic to make speaking such an important part of the language learning process. Uh, such as Sean, who has his kids uh, speaking or writing a story when they have a hundred words, which I think is a waste of time. Uh, and the, the proof is that in our existing language uh, uh, teaching uh, system, where we emphasize producing the language and producing it correctly, very, 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 very few kids end up speaking the language. 
If, on the other hand, the focus was entirely on increasing one's ability to understand, increasing vocabulary, year after year, listening to more stuff, watching TV programs, listening to music, give them Spanish pop music, whatever it might be, just as in Sweden, where they're very successful at learning English, most of the kids learn by listening to popular music and watching TV. So give them that kind of exposure, passive exposure, they're going to start speaking on their own at some point. But don't try to get them to speak when they have a hundred words. I, I think that's just a meaningless exercise. So what I would like some feedback on here is the idea that the, the entire emphasis in language instruction should be on comprehension and vocabulary and that the speaking will come later when uh, circumstances permit, when there's an opportunity to speak, when the, the learner wants to speak, but it should not be something that started. In other words, speaking instruction and getting kids to speak in class or students to speak in any language class should just not be a part of what is taught. And it has the added advantage that if I'm in a classroom, I don't have to listen to other people read poorly and speak poorly, which probably doesn't do my language learning very much good. So, uh, perhaps a bit extreme, every language class in the school should be based on link, measuring the activity index and the known words, which are easily controlled uh, on the system. So, I'm sure that uh, my uh, uh, like and dislike numbers on uh, YouTube here will, uh, will reflect a strong opposition to these ideas, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for listening.